This is the fastest, immediate, all on four temporary prosthesis tutorial exposing all the secrets the full arch experts don't want you to know. I will guide you through the digital workflow, the necessary interoral scans and the entire lab process from model work to finishing using all the secret ingredients to create a successful all on four temporary prosthesis. The process starts with special scan bodies that are also a verification jig. The most common issues in scanning all on four cases are stitching errors, cross arch accuracy and user error. OptiSplint fixes all these problems with a new system that requires only four iOS scans, Pre-Up and Antagonist, the Multi-Unit Tissue Scan and the OptiSplint Scan. The key is to scan as many common reference points as possible. I recommend a three-point alignment with two points in the posterior and one in the anterior region. The OptiSplint scan flags are screwed onto the multi-unit abutments and connected with a special mesh. The mesh must fit passively without any tension. To loot the mesh and scan flex together, we use OptiWeld, a strong dual cure composite. I typically fill up the scan flex post first, then merge the mesh on top and fill in the rest. Avoid applying any resin on the sandblasted scan flex, as this can cause errors during the CAD process in ExoCAD. Be sure to scan as many tissue reference points as possible. At the lab, the first step is to disinfect all items that were in the patient's mouth, including the OptiSplint jig and screws. I recommend Cavicide and let everything soak for 10 minutes. The OptiSplint kit includes a special scanning pad and putty to hold the jig in place during scanning. You only need a small amount of the strong putty. I usually secure the jig with two or three small dots. Gently press the jig onto the putty without applying heavy tension. If the jig breaks, do not try to fix it outside the patient's mouth. It will need to be looted back together intraorally and scanned again using an iOS scanner. One of the reasons I prefer OptiSplint is that it doesn't require a perfect iOS scan from the doctor. These scans here in the video were perfect and are usually not the norm. I scanned the jig with my E3 scanner providing a more accurate scan that can be merged with the iOS scan in ExoCAD. There are many great iOS scan bodies available, but unlike others that only offer direct-to-multi-unit options or costly workarounds with titanium bars, OptiSplint provides the flexibility to create a simple model for looting a variety of titanium bases into the prosthesis. I use regular model multi-unit analogs. These here are from True Abutment and I carefully screw them onto the OptiSplint scan flex. I make sure that the screw fits tightly, but I avoid any damage to the scan flex. OptiWeld is a very strong glue and there's no reason to rush, but there's also no reason not to be careful. When creating the model for OptiSplint, I use a special low expansion die stone. It's crucial to follow the manufacturer's recommended water to powder ratio. I've visited many labs and seen technicians mix stone freehand without measuring, which can lead to inconsistencies. Gypsum is a crystal and the most expansion occurs within the first 30 minutes of curing. I typically let all implant models cure for 24 hours in the impression. For the OptiSplint model, a simple split cast former works well and I make sure to surround the analogs with stone to avoid any loose analogs in the model. Aligning the scans and preparing for design is the most challenging part and having sufficient tissue reference points is crucial. First, I align the iOS OptiSplint scan to the bite scan using two points in the posterior and one point in the anterior region. Next, I align the multi-unit tissue scan to the OptiSplint scan. After that, I align my OptiSplint desktop scanner scan to the iOS ScanFlex scan. Finally, I export the scan and replace it as my scan body scan. I created a detailed video on OptiSplint alignment and all on 4 design. You can find the link to the video in the description. For most of my temporary prostheses, I prefer the aesthetic PMMA from Harvest Dental, which I mill in an excess milling machine. Those can mill directly to multi-unit interfaces accurately and clean. 
Important is also a good milling strategy with high definition areas to mark. Before proceeding with any work on the milled PMMA, I always ensure the tie bases fit properly. For this case, I used four straight DES and two golden DES arm tie bases with the screw channels angled up to 25 degrees. It's crucial to avoid investing time in aesthetic work only to discover later that the prosthesis doesn't fit. A passive fit, free of tension or rocking is essential. Using a large carbide burr, I carefully remove the sprues from the PMMA. Additionally, I use a small diamond burr, similar to those I used in the Zirconia Green Stage video, to carefully redefine the interproximal areas and abrasures. While printing may not need these extra steps, milling assures a greater accuracy up to 5 micron. To color the tissue, I use OptiGlaze from GC and blend four colors into a custom mixture for a natural tissue tone. In a mixing pad, I combine one drop of red brown, two drops of red and one drop of blue. Additionally, I prepare a separate tray with several drops of pink. Using a medium brush, I apply the base tone with pink across the entire tissue area. And for detailed areas and interproximal spaces, I'm going to use a small brush. After curing the base for 5 seconds, I add the custom mixture, mainly between the roots and seamlessly blend them out with a larger brush. This will give you accents of darker and lighter area and makes the tissue appear more lifelike. So why not use a product like Annex Gum to layer and create a more refined pink? While I actually previously used that method, some patients and dentists found the temporal restorations to appear too lifelike, resulting in the patients not returning for the final restoration. The technique I'm demonstrating here ensures a balanced outcome. It's efficient for the lab, patients accept the work, and dental officers can rest assured that patients will return for the final restoration. After I apply a layer of clear coat onto the appliance, I'm going to clean the screw access holes with a Q-tip. I demonstrated in my previous All on 4 video how I cement the tie bases in detail. If you haven't seen that video, please go to my channel and check out the how to make an All on 4 case. I will go in very detailed step how to cement the tie base. In this case, I cemented it on the special model I made with OptiSplint and I get a fabulous result with it. The patient is happy, the doctor was happy, the seating time was very, very short, it dropped right in, the occlusion was right, and the doctor was really impressed by the digital workflows that I presented to him. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, give it a thumbs up, leave a nice comment in the comment sections. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so, hit the notification bell so you get updated on all future videos. You can support this channel on Patreon, I have all the videos there and some Patreon exclusive videos you can watch. Until then, stay tuned.